Welcome back to Angular and Kendo UI Unite. This is the animations video. In this video, we're going to add some custom Angular animations to the to-do app that we built last video, which I'm so super pumped about. Let's dive in. So as a reminder, what we built in the last video was just this simple to-do list. If you click an item from the list, it removes it. If you add a new item, it adds it in as you would expect. So um, this app could seriously benefit from some motion in the interface, um, definitely. So I'm going to dive right in to adding animations to this. Now, uh, from the get-go, um, the Angular animations package is being included in our app, um, and that's because Kendo uses Angular animations. And so we don't need to go ahead and include that, it's already there. Um, and we actually get to go into our component and um, <laughs> yuck, 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 start writing. Uh, so let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger. That, that should be, that should be big enough, maybe too big, I don't know. <laughs> um, now inside of our component, we're going to add a metadata property called animations, and it's going to take an array. And inside of this is where the magic happens. We're going to first start off by using some snippets that I've made, uh, so you don't have to watch as I type them all out and make typos. Um, but the first one, the first snippet is for to do items, and we're going to start off with the long version. Um, so, as you can see, it's yelling at us. It's like, I don't know who trigger is. I don't know who transition is. So we can use command period to go ahead and import that from the animations. Um, but as you can see, it adds all of this goobly gawk, which we can just erase. So we want to import trigger from at angular slash animations. And that's all that it needs to say, just like at angular slash core. Um, so the rest of them, we can do command period and it should add it on as you saw at the top. Now it says, uh, transitions and I should say keyframes, animate and style. So it's just making a very long, very long, but only what we need imports list. Um, but if you've never done an angular animation before, <laughs> prepare yourself to be amazed. But essentially, an animation is composed of a trigger. And then inside of that, you will see the animate tag and the style tag being used in conjunction. Um, we got a little fancy and used a keyframe on this first one, but it's obviously not necessary to be as fancy as we're being. Um, so what we're doing here is we're triggering to do item and to do item is not being used yet. So we're gonna go ahead and go into our component and on the button itself, I'm going to add a at to do item and that's going to attach that animation to that element because you can attach this to any element. And we also are saying transition enter. Um, enter is an alias. So you could also say from the void state to the default state. Um, however, enter looks prettier <laughs> and so does leave. Um, and so, uh, sorry, enter, yes. We're also animating. Uh, over 0.5 seconds, you can also say 500, uh, which would be short for milliseconds, and using an ease in. And then our keyframes, um, it's just going to happen one at a time. So this first style chunk, it's starting off our styles with a height of zero, an opacity of zero, and a transform translate X of negative 100. So if you haven't guessed it yet, this means that it's going to be off and to the left of our screen. Um, all the way off the screen. Next up, we're going to give the style a height of 50 pixels. And then finally, an opacity one and transform translate X to zero. So that's moving it onto the screen. And you might be wondering, well, why are we changing the height? Well, that's so that the list of to-do items makes room for the new to-do item before it starts, you know, budging on over. Um, just makes a little bit more sense. <clears throat> so this is, a glorified <laughs> slide in animation, um, very lengthy. And then this is the exact opposite as you would anticipate. This is the slide out animation. And um, of course we're doing it on leaf. So if we go over, give you a second to really soak that up. <laughs> if we go over now 
um, and we click on these. You should see them all sliding out quite nicely as we remove them. And then if we add in new ones, you see that, as I said, the list will actually expand down, making room for the new item before it slides over into the center of the page, um, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, however, these um, slide in and slide out animations are not very reusable. Um, what do I mean by that? Well, th if we wanted to make, for instance, our header or our input or something else, uh, use one of these animations, we would just have to write all of this again. Um, and so it's super wonderful to make reusable animations by creating, um, if we go ahead and open up, um, by creating a animations.typescript file. Inside this file is where the magic happens. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and create a reusable animation. We'll call it slide in um, and it's equal to an animation um, command period else. And again, we're going to get rid of the googly gawk, um, make it as short and commonsensical as possible. Um, so yes, we are setting this equal to an animation. It's actually yelling at us because we have not given it any arguments. Um, so we, we shall do so. Give it an array. And inside of that array is actually where we're going to go over. Uh, we don't need this file open. Thank you very much. And take pluck out this slide in animation that we built out. And so we'll leave that empty for now. And I'll show you what to do in a moment. Um, and paste this animation into here. Um, now, of course, again, the underlined squiggles are because it does not have these things imported yet. So if we go through each one and do command period and enter, uh, it added that to the top import statement and we should be good to go now. So we're going to, inside of our to do item enter, use this animation now. And so we'll say use animation and boop, boop, uh, Inside, we say the animation that we want to use, which we called our slide in, uh, which I'm doing command period to import that. If we scroll up to the top, you'll see that slide in was now imported from animations. Perfect. Um, now at this point, we should also be able to do the exact same thing for our leave one. And so let's grab the, I always have a hard time telling. I'm like, is this the end? Yeah, that's the end. <laughs> uh, and we want the beginning style as well. So we're going to want to grab all of that. Yes. And I know we haven't created it yet, but we will. <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and populate it like that. And use animation, slide out. Yes. And then, of course, we're going to the very next thing, create the slide out inside of animations. So I'm going to save this and go back over here and let's say export let slide out equal animations, animations. Sometimes I just like, that's not at all what we want. Animations. Why? <laughs> I don't know why this keeps happening. Animations. Oh, it's because I'm doing <laughs> S plural. It's animation. BT dubs, we're not setting equal to multiple animations, apparently. Woof. <laughs> um, option shift F uh, should clean up a file unless you've horribly broken something. So it's because I copied over too much. That's my bad. Okay, perfect. So we should have this slide out animation. And let me double check this transition because I think, yeah, I got rid of there we go. Okay. Um, I told you I was bad with matching at brackets, man, even with the, uh, the colorizing to help. Uh, so that is so much shorter. I mean, look at how much shorter that is um, by just saying use animation slide in, use animation slide out. Also up the top here, you can see that we're no longer using some of these things. So if we're not using them, let's not import them. Um, and if we go back over that they slide in from the side, yay and they're sliding out. And if we add one, it's sliding in from the side. So our slide in and slide out animation working perfectly, top notch reusable animations for the win. Um, <laughs> now, <clears throat> now that we've got Angular animations pretty much under our belts and reusable animations under our belts, 
I wanted to introduce um, query. And so query, what do you mean by that? Inside of our animations, we're going to go ahead and use another snippet. Um, I think I called to do animations, yells. And uh, to do animations is using a couple extra things that we've not imported yet. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Um, stagger, import that, animate child, import that. And I'm gonna walk you through this amazingness. So both, um, actually, let's just go ahead and start from the very top. That way <laughs> you're not super confused. So we're creating a trigger for to-do animations. And as promised in the last video, um, inside of our HTML, we have a div wrapper here that's not really doing a whole lot, but that's because we're going to use it for this to do animations. Um, and so you can basically create um, a trigger that's like this wrapper, for instance, for instance. And then inside of this wrapper, we can query any of these elements like H1 or input, which I actually am doing and giving them an animation. And so on transition enter, I am saying to this group, hey group, I want you to do a couple things on enter. The first one is I want you to move the H1 down. The second one is I want you to move the input down. Okay, pretty simple, pretty, pretty happy. Uh, the final one is my absolute favorite. Um, and it is querying the to-do items, which we already have on the screen, and we're staggering them by 100 milliseconds. And so instead of them slamming in together, they're going to like one, two, three, go in one at a time. Super nice. Um, so the last thing, the last step to this gloriousness is that we actually need to create this move down um, animation. So we're going to save. And actually, since we're gonna have to come back here anyways let's do it now and say move down and then inside of our animation let's create it export let move down equal and anime and make sure it's singular <laughs> uh, animation and now we get to do the fun stuff so inside of an animation you can use um, the first style as the initial style that it will apply by default. And so we're going to say, boom, 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 we want to translate, uh, sorry, transform, transform, translate, and then we actually wanna translate the Y because I wanna move it down. And so I'm saying, I want you to start 20 pixels above what you normally start at. And this part needs to be a string Yes, okay. And the next part is we're going to say animate and mm, we'll say 200 milliseconds. Um, at this point, we could go ahead and say inside of here, uh, style, and then we would give the style uh, translate or this transform translate line, but say zero pixels, which is essentially what it's doing. However, zero pixels on the y-axis is where it starts. That's its default. So you don't actually need to specify this where I'm going to style if the where it's going to is the default. So like, let's say we're doing a fade in and I say, hey, I want your style up here to start out as zero, as invisible. I don't need to say style opacity one inside of here because that's what it is at default. You just need to give it um, like a duration for the transition. So we save this. We're now using move down inside of our query for the H1 and the input. And then we're using stagger for our to-do items uh, to stagger their animation um, that's being given right here on enter. So if we go over now, we should see three things happening. We wanna look for the H1 moving down as well as the input moving down, very subtle and very quick. Um, so keep your eyes peeled. And then right after those two things happen, we wanna see each one of the to-do items come in one at a time. So let's go over, refresh the page. Yay! I'm gonna do it a couple more times. So as you can see the input, and the H1 are sliding in very subtly, and the to-do items one at a time are coming in. 
So I really hope that you've enjoyed uh, diving into Angular animations and adding some custom ones on top of our Kendo UI and Angular to do app. Um, in the next video, we have some fun uh, time picker stuff uh, because what's a to do item really without a uh, time due date on it. So um, thank you so much for watching and I hope you're learning a lot and happy coding to you.